this Saturday, the 7th of July. It's just gone 7 a.m. and I've arrived in Ulverston, which is a market town in the very southern fringe of the Lake District. And it's the starting point for the Cumbria Way walk, which I'm about to begin, which is a 76-mile walk from Ulverston to Carlisle, up through the heart of the Lake District. Uh, first impressions of Ulverston is a beautiful place. I wish I had a bit more time to explore it. The guidebook says it's the birthplace of Laurel from Laurel and Hardy, and there's a museum for that. Um, but I don't think I'll have time for any of that today. The guidebook also says that today's walk, which is a 16-mile walk from Ulverston to Coniston, that there's very little in the way of food or water or shops along the way. So the plan is to find some shops around here, and I think there's quite a few of them. Um, stock up for the day and hit the trail early. So I'll catch you later on. When you reach Beacon Tarn, the official Cumbria Way route follows a flat path along its western shore, but in the advice of a local, I took the path on the eastern shore, which climbs steadily to a small summit cairn, and from here the views are superb all around. The Stickle Pike to the west, Old Man of Coniston to the north, and the hugely impressive Coniston Water to the east, where Donald Campbell set world water speed records in the 1950s, before tragically losing his life there in 1967 during an attempt to break his own record. After taking in the views from the summit of Beacon Fell, I began the descent towards Coniston Water, rejoining the Cumbria Way and following its path all the way to the lake shore. Coniston Hall campsite is a very popular place to stay, especially given its location right on the shore of Coniston Water, and after a day of hiking in very hot weather, this was the perfect place to cool down. Good morning. It's uh, just went about half six, and I'm here at Coniston Hall campsite where I stayed last night. It's a very nice campsite right on the shores of uh, Coniston Water, so when you wake up you have views like this, which is hard to beat, perfectly calm, perfectly still. It was warm enough yesterday, you could go in for a swim, and I think there's a couple of people just about to go in now as well, uh, but I'll leave that for, for another day. Another funny thing about the campsite is there's just a lot of sheep that are free to roam around. You can probably see them up here, uh, and they kind of go in and out through the tents, I think looking for crumbs or something like that. So. Yesterday's walk uh, was a good walk, was tough. The guidebook's right about there not being much in the way of um, shops or uh, places to, to pick up food or water along the way. Really, there's nothing. I had, uh, had to stop at a farm and ask a very kind farmer to fill up my water bottles for me, uh, which he did, which was very nice of him. Because um, the thing that's making it really tough was just the heat. It's about 22, 23 degrees, and it's predicted to be that way for the rest of the week. Um, so today, the walk is from Coniston to... Uh, Great Langdale, which is about 14 miles, and uh, apparently there's much more in this, uh, much more populated, and there's more pubs and cafes and shops along the way. So definitely plan to take advantage of that and try to keep the weight of what I'm carrying down. So plans to pack up my things and head off uh, for Great Langdale in about half an hour or so. So I'll catch you later. 
It's just about one o'clock. We've come up on the park farm, uh, which thinks about five o'clock. It was quite slow, leaving Coniston this morning, mainly because there's so much to do there. Uh, there's lots of cafes and uh, sort of craft shops, souvenir shops, and things, so I didn't actually leave there until it was well after uh, 11. Uh, I found a good uh, restaurant to have a full breakfast in, which was nice. Uh, I was also able to charge up some of my electronics, which is always good. So, uh, yeah, Coniston has pretty much everything the hiker could ever look for. Um, but I said it did set me back a wee bit, so uh, be quite late getting into Great Lion Day later on, but I'm not in any rush anyway. So I'm coming up on High Park Farm now, which I will show you. And it's apparently very good for scones and refreshments. So I'm hoping to take advantage of that and then head on for the second half of the walk. Well, I'm just leaving High Park Farm, where I think I had one of the best plowman sandwiches I've ever had, and maybe the best gone I've ever had. And it was funny, the reason I actually went there is because the uh, Cicerone guy that I've been using this uh, trip mentions that it's great for food and uh, scones and things. Uh, when I got chatting to the owner, he, he didn't realise that, and he actually took a copy of the book, uh, photocopied it and wanted to show his wife. Uh, but he also said it puts him in a bit, bit of a bind, because he's retired and so is she, and they really only do it uh, to put in sort of uh, a few hours here and there each day. Uh, so he did say that if people are doing this walk, they should know that it's not always open. Uh, but just something to bear in mind. He's a really nice guy, and that's been a feature really of the trip so far. Uh, everybody that I've, I've met, whether it's farmers helping me fill up with water bottles, or people helping me when I've gotten lost and have definitely taken a few wrong turns, everybody's been very, very friendly. So uh, I'm continuing the walk again now towards Skelwith Bridge uh, on my way to Old Dungeon Gale. Um, I think I have seven or eight miles to go, so I'll head on. It's just gone nine o'clock. I finished having my dinner there in the old Dungeon Gill Hotel, which is nice. And I'm walking back to my campsite now, which is the National Trust campsite, two or three minutes walk away. Um, that's the end of day two already. It just seems like a lifetime ago that constant. There's so much to see between uh, there and here. Uh, it really feels like I'm in, properly in the lake district now, in the heart of it all. There's just everywhere you look, there's huge mountains, all sides. So I'm excited about the next few days having a store. If it's anywhere like this, I'll be very, very happy. Um, so I'm going to walk back to the, the campsite now, uh, have a shower, listen to a few podcasts, rest up and see what the next few days have in store. Hopefully it'll be more like today.
Well, it's the morning of day three. I left the National Trust campsite at Old Gunning Gale about 45 minutes ago. Uh, anybody thinking of doing this walk at 30 recommends staying there. Very good facilities, um, a good sort of quiet campsite, and it's two to three minutes walk from there to the Old Dungeon Gill, which is the finish point for stage two and the starting point of today, stage three. Uh, today's walk is going from Old Dungeon Gill to Keswick, 16 miles, up and over Stake Pass, which I'm about to get to in I think uh, about 10 more minutes walking. Uh, really feels like you're in the sort of the, the, the uh, remote parts of the Lake District now. There's nothing really around apart from, as you can see, a lot of sheep just sitting around, resting up. Um, so I'm about to set off up Stake Pass, and then from there it's a descent into Keswick. Uh, as I said, 16 mile day, I'm hoping to get into Keswick about early evening time, so I'll see how I get on. Well, I just passed through the small village of Rossfield, which is mile nine in today's walk, and I stopped at DU Farm for some food, which is a nice uh, rest stop. Uh, today's walk's been going good. The climb out of Stake Pass is a steep one, so definitely have some huffing and puffing to get up there. But the top of Flattens out, you cross some bracken, then you begin this descent into Langdale down a series of uh, zigzag paths. It makes things a bit easier. Um, from there, you follow the valley's course along the right-hand side of the river all the way to Rossfield. And that section really is one of the most beautiful walks I've ever done. Um, so I don't know what the rest of today has in store. I think Keswick's about seven miles away, and it's just gone half past one, so I'm hoping to get there in early evening time. Maybe get some pub grub or something, hopefully. Um, currently just crossing the bridge of the River Derwent, as you can see. It is completely bone dry, which is a sign of how dry things have been here for the last month or so. I don't think there's been any uh, rain. So just had to carry more water than I normally would on a hiking trip, but it's okay, you just deal with it, and there's quite a lot of places to stop along the way in this section and the previous section. So I'm going to head on to Keswick now and hopefully get there in time for dinner.
morning. Uh, it's day four of the Cumbria Way walk. Another scorching hot day, as you can tell by the hat and sunglasses. Uh, I left Keswick about an hour ago. It's quite a steep climb up from the town. But as you get higher, the views back across the water are spectacular. But I got chatting to the locals who said the best views are actually from a place called Nature Hill, which although it's not actually on the Cumbria Way, it's really a short life version, about a half a mile or so up and quite a gentle zigzag path. So I hope you'll agree the local was right. These are the views that I've been taking in for about the last uh, 15 minutes here sitting on Natrick Hill. Uh, just spectacular views all the way along uh, Derwent Water. You can see Keswick there. I don't know the name of all these mountains, so I don't even pretend to, to say I do. I know the one in the centre now is Cat Bells, which is a popular day hiking spot. So I'll be sad to leave this area behind, as you can see. It's a spectacular place. Uh, it's the last look of this valley I'll have from here on in. The next section of the walk goes into Glendale Terra Valley, back a Skiddaw, Skiddaw House, then up that high pike before descending into Caldbeck. So I've been sitting here long enough, it's time I put the rucksack back on and head off. Uh, it's a bit of an oasis in the desert really, as you can see there is nothing around for miles and miles and miles. Thankfully they've left out water for walkers which is good of them, you just make a small donation and you can top up, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, the next stage in the walk is to head over to High Pike which I think is there. Um, uh, hopefully I lost my guidebook yesterday but in keeping with the theme of the trip, a very friendly person, uh, actually the guy who ran the guest house I stayed in last night, gave me this map, it's really good, it's a Harvey map of the Cumbria Way. Uh, he said a couple of walkers jacked in the walk in Keswick and gave him the map to keep, so he passed it on to me. Uh, I'm going to make a good use of that, check the route, um, and then head on to High Pike, which is the highest point on the walk at 658 metres. So I'm going to fill up my water here at Skidall House and then head on. Reaching the summit of High Pike, I began the descent towards the small village of Colbeck. Much of this descent is over barren hillside and the path can be difficult to find and follow. In poor weather and bad visibility, a map and compass be essential, otherwise it would be very easy to stray off course. Eventually the barren hillside gives way to farmland the tarmac lanes which makes things much easier. And while walking along one of these lanes I attracted a convoy of curious cows who followed me for the final part of the walk into Colbeck.
Good morning. Well, it's the last day of the Cumbria Way walk, uh, and if I look from the videos like I was camping in somebody's garden, that is because I am. <laughs> I'm actually staying in a place called Thossel Farm Campsite. Uh, well, it's a working farm, but they allow Cumbria Way walkers to stay for one night, and there's good facilities. There's a uh, washing area, showers, uh, toilet block, uh, everything you need really, and it's also in a very nice location perched beside a river, which is just down that way. So glad I found this place. There's not much of a way of accommodation in Colbeck. It's a very small village. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely recommend this place. To say it's about a half a mile walk uh, east through the village on a minor road to get here, but worthwhile. Um, so the plan today is to do the final 50 mile section, which is a much flatter walk uh, than the previous days, following the course of the river in large parts into Carlisle. I'm actually quite glad the terrain's going to be easier today because I'm not sure if you can see, but over the last couple of days, uh, chunks have been falling off the soles of my shoes, uh, both of them. I can't really complain. I've had these shoes for a couple of years now and they've given me good service. Um, They've done the uh, Tour de Mont Blanc, the West Side Away, and now this in them, so I uh, can't have any complaints. But I hope they have 15 miles left in them because I don't fancy doing uh, the final section barefoot, and then I can give the shoes the retirement they deserve. So, my plan is to pack up my things, head into Colbeck Village where there's a few small uh, shops and cafes and things, hopefully, get a good breakfast there, and then set off on the trail.